Welcome to the workbench, I'm Doug. Today I'm gonna to show you a few tips on how to prevent problems with your needle threader. When you have a stitch selected, I'm just gonna select a standard straight stitch. In order to thread your machine, it's very important that you realize that you should always initialize the machine and activate your needle up down button so that your needle goes down, hear that clunk, then your needle goes up. And what that does is initialize all the different position motors. Okay, now when that needle went up, it went all the way to the top, but then it dropped down about one to 1.5 millimeter. Okay, because whenever you select your needle up button, it's designating and placing the take up lever to its highest position. As you've probably seen before in my other videos, I've always mentioned that anytime you start to sew or stop to sew, your take up lever should always be at that highest position. Okay, so make sure that you always select with the needle up. Now, also, when you go to thread, okay, you wanna make sure that your spool is mounted to the top, okay? And then that you make sure that you have the proper spool cap. You know, sometimes the outer rim of your thread spool has little notches on it. Kind of hold your thread into place so you don't lose it, right? So you wanna have a spool cap just large enough for your thread to whip around the spool cap, but not against the spool. Okay, now also, as that thread is coming off, it's best to have the thread coming from the back, over the top, and underneath the bottom. That way it's always throwing that thread towards your tension plate here. Okay, and also when you start to thread, you always wanna make sure that your presser foot's in the up position. Okay, that's why on the baby lock machines, we have this little protection plate here. So you see with the presser foot up, this area is open for threading your take-up lever, but when you lower it, it closes off. That's to ensure that your thread falls in between your tension disc. Okay, so I'll raise my presser foot. Then I always like to hold a little bit of pressure when I go through my threading areas with my two fingers on the right side. And then come up, come around the top, come down. And then you'll go up into your take-up lever, come down in a downstroke and position in number six down here. Okay. Now when you go to activate the needle threader, you then want to lay your thread off to the left side and then trim using your thread cutter. And this is going to be the preferred length of thread you want on top of your needle, especially when you start that next color in your embroidery. That way it makes sure that the thread goes all the way to the bottom side. Okay, and then all we have to do is activate the needle threader. Now you noticed when this needle threader activated, the presser foot dropped automatically. Okay, and then after the, it was threaded, it went back in the up position. But we don't have the luxury of that on all of our machines. Some of our other mechanical machines, if you left your presser foot in the up position, then activated the needle threader lever, then the needle threader hook would hit the foot on its rotation. Okay, that could damage maybe the needle threader a little bit. So always make sure on those machines that you also lower the presser foot mechanically prior to threading your needle. You still wanna have the presser foot up so that when you thread it, your thread lays into your thread tension disc. Okay, that's very important. Okay. Now, when you're changing colors or when you're getting ready to remove the spool that you currently have on the machine, you always want to make sure that you remove it by snipping the thread from the spool. Okay, And then with your presser foot in the up position, then you'll pull that thread straight out. I see a lot of times customers will get done sewing and just grab the spool and pull it in reverse but there's some particular threads that might have a lot of twist to it. And as it comes off the spool, it's naturally kind of untwisting. But if you pull it back in reverse, sometimes it could do a reverse twist and maybe get lodged up into the tension mechanism area. So anytime I thread a machine, like I mentioned, I come around the top, I go around, I come up to the top area here, 
I want to have that nice smooth pull. And then when I lower the present foot, I want to feel the tension occur on that thread. If not, then there could be lint and fuzz impacting somewhere in this area. Or that twisted thread restricting that tension pull. Okay, so if you ever experienced that, kind of leave it to you if you'd like to try to correct it by yourself. So you see when I removed the thread, I snipped it and then pulled it forward. So follow these steps for successful needle threading. Now that you know, get out and sew.